Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this height field paint 3D sub. It allows you to paint geometry onto a terrain, like so. And as you can see, it allows you to layer the strokes on top of each other. Now, let's get started. First off, we want to be in sub level and put on a standard height field and a standard height field paint. We can then try the height field paint out. As we can see, strokes that are painted affect previous strokes. So what we want to do is we want to basically make a height field paint sub that paints geometry. To make this modified version, I'm going to duplicate the height field paint sub. So I'm going to go to Assets, Asset Manager, and because I have to not select it, it selects it already. And I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to name it. And I think naming is super important, so I'm going to do this as clean as I can. And you should put this in a different folder, but because this is a tutorial, I'm just going to put this in default. Cool. Now we just put this down. The, so first we delete the standard one, and then we put down our 3D height field paint 3D node. And let's change it. So right click, allow editing of contents, type properties, and let's go to node. Here I'm gonna add this. So the state name is used by Houdini internally and sometimes Houdini messes up when two states have the same name. So we want to avoid conflicts like that. And in the interactive script, we have a name here that we will alter. And we can also add a, this name here, if we find it. And if we apply this, now if this is selected, and in tool mode, we can see the name is changed. Okay, let's put this to the side. Let's dive inside. How does it work, actually? Um, here the height field gets expanded and downrest a bit. Here a stroke gets created. A stroke in Houdini is a curve that was painted on geometry. And uh, or at least the stroke node allows you to paint curves onto geometry. And uh, this ray node basically ensures that it's closely intersecting with the terrain. Uh, then there's some caching magic that I will re refer to later. Let's um, say it pipes through. Uh, the strokes are, as we said, curves, and these curves then get uh, sampled uh, and processed a little bit. There's some additional information from the stroke node. Uh, then they get resampled to have the proper resolution, um, which you can actually control in here with the quality slider here, stroke quality. Uh, the higher the quality, the more resampling. And then it gets mathematically combined with the terrain. And there's an alternative route where it uses a slightly uh, s uh, blurred field for smudging. Finally, this gets repeated for each stroke in such a way that each subsequent stroke is covering the previous one. And uh, as a kind of post-processing, you can then activate some visualization settings for the mask. Now, back to the caching system here, what it is for and what it, um, how it works is that each stroke that you make will get automatically cached into these cache nodes, into these stash nodes. And that means that 
anything that you do has to be on the computer at once and this loop runs as few times as possible. Um, here the curves are st uh, stored and here the terrain is stored. And the state script that we have seen earlier um, deals primarily with this caching system, managing it and handling different button presses. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of all of this here and we're just gonna add a few nodes in between. So let's start with that. The first thing we want to do is we want to edit this line here. We don't need this. Uh, we want this code. And what it does is that it takes the up vector of the height field and stores this in, in the up attribute. Um, this up vector is generated from looking at the internal reference frame of the height field, looking at the first two points in height and comparing them. So even if you rotate the height field, this up vector will face along the up vector of the height field. Then here, uh, we can't see the stroke. So let's just grab it from the stash and make a stroke. And what we can do now is we can see the stroke, but because of the setting here, it was only points. Now we have the actual curve back. Here it comes in as it was. Here it gets resampled. So why do we need the line? Uh, so we got the relationship between the points and that allows us to figure out an orientation. Because at this point, these points don't have a normal. If you just add a visualizer, let's do this really fast. There is no normal here. And if we add something like a polyframe, then change the settings a bit, we get the normals along the edge. Now, we can do this also with a uh, orient along curve node, but the polyframe seems cheaper and simpler to me at least. That's uh, uh, old habits. Copy to points. Then we need uh, something like a sphere. And we can turn off the point display. And this works, but we actually don't see the orientation. We don't see what we just did with the polyframe. So let, uh, let's add a pig head, whatever else we want to use. I'm just going to move it up a bit. I'm going to plug these into a switch and now I could just switch to the pig head and we can see the pig heads going along the curve. The copy to points uses the up vector and the normal vector if present to orient the geometry. If the polyframe was not here, the pig heads would look into a random direction. So. Uh, technically, uh, we are almost done. We can now do a height field project. Um, the green input is for the height field. We get it from the feedback here. And the geometry goes in the second input. And there we go. We have pig heads on geometry, uh, on the terrain. And that is already a viable result. We just fix this here, and technically this is already done, but we want to polish it up a bit. One thing I want to do is I want to actually expose the mask, uh, or create a mask 
for this geometry. And let's see. If we change this to mask, we already get the mask from the geometry. But um, I would prefer it if the mask was a bit closer to the edge. So I'm going to use a ma um, height field mask expand. Um, mask expand. And it's important that you put it after the post oblige stroke because the post oblige each stroke is used by the script. So if it's included, it will be um, the mask will keep expanding. We can grab this radius, plug it in here, and just modify it a little bit with a small factor. Now, if we paint a stroke, the mask will be pretty tight around the edge. Cool. But we want to be able to paint different geometries and we want to control that. So we simply set up a parameter for that. We add an ordered menu. Let's call it type. I also strongly recommend to add a help, but we don't need to do this right now. Let's say this is a sphere. And the second one is a pigot. Apply. Let's put this away. And now we should have it here. Sphere and pigot. Let's hook it up. And this is why we needed a switch earlier on. There we go. Just drag and drop relative input. And now we should be able to switch it. There we go. Um, you can, of course, enhance this further. And the uh, stroke quality should still allow you to sample at a higher rate. Say 15. Ah, uh, yeah, my computer doesn't like it. I was a bit of a little bit overzealous here. Um, anyway, it's done. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope this teaches you a little bit something. And if you have any questions, please leave comments in the video description uh, below the video and like, subscribe, whatever. Uh, let me know what you think. And have a good one.